Africa! Silence in his memory, and later on in the program, we're going to be coming back to him. So let's take the silence at this time for Muhammad Fawemi. I was at an event where he said he had been detained up to 60 times. And Bethany, he had an indomitable spirit that the liberation of the masses is the only measure of all intellectual activity. Yani did not hold his knowledge. And like I said, he made a mark, an indelible mark on the history of the legal profession. Those of us who are lucky to have witnessed Ghani address court proceedings, you would think that the roof was going to fall on us because Ghani could use four different words to describe just one phenomenon. And he had the gift of oratory. And a lawyer that can't speak in court, that can't arrest the audience, I think is in the wrong profession. I did say that the ultimate outcome of the election will largely depend on the interface between the bench, the bar, and the political gladiators. As members of the legal profession, serving either on the bench or at the bar, we owe Nigerians sincere and honest participation in the process. We must do all that is legitimately within our abilities, motivated by the desire to serve the cause of justice, to ensure that the relevant laws and rules properly interpreted and applied remain the guiding principles for our involvement in the process. Beyond ensuring free, fair, and credible elections in the forthcoming elections, we should work towards improving the democratic process in Nigeria. Ghani works to ensure that we have more political parties to choose from. Most of us are aware of what happened in the last primaries that we saw across the political parties. And it is from this flawed process that candidates have emerged from whom we must select our next leaders. Apparently, you do not have any choice. And what I described, Section 221 of the Constitution, and with due respect to the framers of that Constitution, is that there is a fraud being committed on the people of this country. Fraud in the sense that we don't pay any attention to how we produce our candidates. And you cannot contest election unless on a platform of a political party. We all know what goes on in these political parties, so that way we don't get the best of us to emerge as candidates for us to choose at the general election. We pay attention to what happens at the general election, but in the process of producing the candidates, we look away. And so whatever they produce, that is what we are limited to in terms of our choice. I think that is a fraud that is committed on us. The only way we can break away from that is to pursue constitutional amendment to say, okay, the best of us is the person we want to contest for this office. Too soon. It is going to choose a new president, 28 state governors, 109 senators, 360 House of Representative members, and about 993 state houses of assembly members. This election will be conducted at 179,846 polling units with a register containing 94 million registered voters. This is a huge election by any standards. And Nigeria and Nigerians deserve to be congratulated on this feat of successive elections as the mode of selecting their leaders. While we are here today, the economic situation is so bleak that your central bank has decided to limit the amount of your own money in your own bank account that you can withdraw to no more than, is it 500,000 naira a week or so? And while we are here, Nigerians are being charged rent and goods and services in dollars. Meanwhile, as Mr. Femi Falana, we're sitting here, recently remarked in a news article, the legal tender still remains the Naira and the Kobo. This one is familiar. We have the same problem in Ghana, that today, 
Many local governments in Nigeria, in Niger, no, Niger, Zamfara, Sokoto, Kaduna, or Borono states have been captured by terrorists. In Anambra and Imo states, there are areas where nobody can talk of going. They are even threatening now to kidnap President Buhari. Mr. Falana added in that quote that some Nigerians are praying and fasting for that to happen. Please note I'm quoting him. <laughs> in other words, have Nigeria's six previous democratic elections produced the dividend of development for its people? Yet these elections were deemed either by either election observers or Nigerian courts to be free, fair, and credible. Elections are the true essence of democracy. They allow people to choose their leaders and to hold them accountable for their stewardship. Everyone has the right to elect the government of his or her country by a secret vote. Without this right, there can be no free and fair election. As one writer puts it, if consent of the governed is the most fundamental concept of democracy, its most essential right is that of citizens to choose their leaders in free, fair, and regular elections. We have the opportunity to become candidates for elections. Again, it is not a fair election if all registered political parties do not have an equal right to contest elections on a level playing field. I do hope that after this program, the NBA will go beyond monitoring elections and monitor the entire process. And Mr. President, in 2011, and I don't Mr. that I started this battle, you have to continue it. When INET does not provide money for prosecuting electoral offenders, in 2011, the NBA uh, was able to mobilize young lawyers that prosecuted the electoral offender. This time around, I think the NBA should do that. Mike, the celebration of uh, the limit of uh, money that people can have now is meaningless because the economy has been dollarized. $100 is 75000 So distributing $10,000, $10, that's 7500 So unless you ban the use of dollars or ask you gather some people, give them so much money, you call them delegates, and they vote somebody among themselves, and that is your candidate. Then the rest of us have to line up and vote for that person. It's a charade. It's nonsense. It's a charade. We must begin to change these processes because we should put ourselves together because this is not a jamboree where we just come and sit down and uh, talk and make ourselves happy. By the time we leave here, we shouldn't be that happy because we have to cancel that that process that everybody will go and gather in a the hotel, then they will start carrying dollars and sharing the money, then the second day you go and queue up. And perhaps, perhaps, you bring forward the worst character that the country can afford. How, how do you get to this point? Okay. If you cannot afford 5,000 uh, in a month, and somebody call me and give me 30,000, um, will I really vote for my conscience? Will I really vote for my conscience? I think it's not going to be very possible. So, when you have made the population so poor, to the point that they can no longer vote their conscience, then how fair is that election? I'm not talking about being free. It's easy to achieve that. How fair it is if on that day they are queue up and they say, oh, if I'm going to take a bag of rice and beans, then I should move here. And when you finish voting, then you come. You come to the other side and get the balance. So I have to actually vote against my conscience and collect back of rice, then after I'm going to show evidence I've voted, then I get the balance, maybe 20,000. So how fair is that kind of election? What embrace of democracy is essentially because it brings about participation and accountability to the process of human development. Election provides vertical accountability. But because of the failure of arms of government to deal with horizontal accountability, we now have 
emerging what we call diagonal accountability. Citizens taking responsibility. Never before have we seen the kind of awareness that we are seeing today in this country. This election, make no mistake, this election is one that the people of this country want to make a statement. And that statement will be made. There is nothing anybody can do. Power has been returned back to the pulling unit. We are left to be won and lost and not in the courtroom anymore. We must end the business of election tribunal in Nigeria.